Hey and welcome back to the channel. Today's lesson is starting off with some flashbacks to uh, how to convert between degrees and radians. So if you think you remember how to do that, pause the video and have a go. Or if you need a refresher, you can watch and learn as I go through them right now. Okay, first thing, pi over 12 to degrees. So you have to keep in mind that whenever we see a pi in radians, uh, that represents 180 degrees. So pi divided by 12, we can just do 180 divided by 12 gets us an answer of 15 degrees. Okay, so any pi represents 180 degrees. Going backwards, 50 degrees to radians, what we wanna do is express 50 degrees as a fraction out of 180 and then chuck a pi on it. Okay, so for 50 degrees, this can be written as 50 pi out of 180 radians. And now we always like to simplify our fractions, so we can write this as five pi over 18 by dividing top and bottom by 10. So 50 degrees is five pi over 18 radians. Okay, now for C, once again, we're going to write our pi as 180 degrees. So five pi over two is going to be five times 180 divided by two. Okay, another way we can do this is say that our pi is 180. So if we divide that by two, we get 90. Usually it's easier to divide first before you, before you times. So 180 divided by two is 90. Then we'll times the 90 by five and we get 450 degrees as our answer. So 180 divided by two times by five. And for D, 700 radians, we're going to follow the process from question B. We're going to write 700 with a pi over 180. There is 700 degrees in radians and now we just simplify the fraction. 700 over 180 works out to be 35 over nine. So we have 35 pi over nine. Okay, today's lesson is called Applying Radians. So we're going to go over the uh, the tricky concepts we've been doing recently uh, on the channel with the uh, angle of any magnitude and the trig uh, identities. Uh, we're now going to switch from degrees to radians because uh, later on in the course when we start doing um, calculus using trigonometry, everything's got to be in radians. So we've got to get more comfortable with using radians as opposed to degrees, which we're used to. All right, to start off with some examples, we're going to find the exact value of these expressions, which all involve radians. So the way my brain handles these is I kind of think of radians as like my second language and degrees as my, as my first language. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to convert the angle into degrees because I'm better at memorizing uh, my exact values when they're in degrees. That's just how my brain works. That's how I'm going to teach. Okay, so for question A, we've got sine of pi over 3. I know because pi is 180 and 180 divided by 3 is 60, so pi over 3 is actually 60 degrees. Okay, now once again, if you've got your exact values memorized, it makes these questions way easier, or if you need to reach for your formula sheet and check your triangles, you can, but the exact value of sine 60 is root 3 over 2. So there is sine pi over 3. For question B, we want to find sec of pi over 4. So first thing I'm going to do is I'll say, well, pi over 4 is a quarter of 180, so it's 45. Okay, now sec, from last lesson, third letter is C, so sec is cos flipped upside down. So ne next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say, well, I know cos 45 is 1 over root 2, so to find sec 45, I've just got to flip that fraction upside down and say root 2 over 1, which we can just write as root 2. Okay, so convert 2 degrees figure out which uh, fraction you're flipping, and then you've got your answer. All right, let's do a similar thing for question C with cosec of pi on three. So once again, pi over three is 60 degrees. So we're finding cosec 60. Third letter is S. So this will be um, sine 60 flipped upside down, which we got in question A. So if sine 60 is root three on two, cosec 60 will be two over root three, exactly. Okay, reminder, if you just shove these into a calculator and write a decimal, you're not going to get the marks for that. Okay, question D. We can figure out what um, cos pi on 6 is and then square it and then take it away from 1. Or if we wanted to be a bit extra, we could flex on the fact that we know that, uh, well, first of all, pi over 6 is 30 degrees. And now if we wanted to be a bit fancy, we could use the fact that 1 minus cos squared is actually equal to sine squared. This is one of our Pythagorean identities from the last video. So if you want to save a bit of time, we can write the right-hand side as just sine squared of 30 degrees. 
okay? So now we'll figure out sine 30 and we'll just square it. So sine 30 is one half. If we square that, we get one squared over two squared. So we get a quarter, okay? But if you just did cos squared 30, squared it, and then subtract that from one, you will get the same thing anyway. It's just a bit of fun. Okay, up next for example two, similar stuff, but we're working with some tougher angles now. So first one is 10 of five pi on four. All right, first things first, let's convert this into degrees because degrees are a bit easier for my smooth brain at least. So let's think, uh, pi divided by four, we already did that, that's 45 degrees. If we multiply that by five, we get 225 degrees. So five pi over four is 225. Now we've got to find the exact value of 225. So let's think about what quadrant we are in now. So 225 is beyond 180. So we're in quadrant three and we're in quadrant three by 45 degrees. Okay, because 225 is 180 plus 45. Now in quadrant three, uh, 10 is positive and the others are gonna be negative. So 10, 225 is gonna be positive 10, 45. 1045 is the nice neat one. It's just the value of one. So the answer to 10 of five pi on four is just one. Okay, on the right now, we've got cos of two pi on three. So let's convert the angle. So pi is 180, pi over three is 60. If we times that by two, we get 120. So we wanna figure out the value of cos 120. Okay, 120 is in quadrant two. It's 60 degrees back from 180. So it's gonna be 60 degrees in quadrant two. In quadrant two, we have sine positive, which means that cos is gonna be negative. So cos 120 will be negative cos 60. Okay, our exact value for cos 60 is a half. So our answer is just minus one half. Okay, a couple more examples. We've got sine of 11 pi over six. All right, so let's convert this one straight away. So pi on six is gonna be 30 degrees. And then if we multiply that by 11, we'll get 330. So we're trying to find the exact value of sine 330. That's gonna put us in quadrant four, 330 degrees is 30 degrees back from 360. So we are 30 degrees in quadrant four. Okay, in quadrant four, cos is positive, And so sine and tan are going to be negative. So we're gonna be equal to negative sine 30. Okay, sine 30 is equal to one half, so our answer is minus one half. Okay, a bit of a trickier one now. We're trying to find sec of seven pi over six. Okay, let's convert our angle. Pi over six, once again, is 30 degrees. Multiply that by seven and we get 210. So we're trying to find sec 210. We should know that sec, the third letter is C, so sec is cos flipped upside down. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to find uh, cos of 210, and then we're going to flip it upside down. So 210 puts us in the third quadrant. It puts us 30 degrees beyond 180, so we are 30 degrees in quadrant three. Um, and because cos is uh, negative in quadrant three, that means that sec will also be negative, so they match up, okay? All right, so we know cos 30 is equal to root three on two, that's our exact value. So to find sec 30, we're gonna turn that upside down and say two over root three. Because we're in quadrant three, we're gonna make it negative. So our final answer is minus two over root three. Okay, lots of steps to get just one little fraction. Okay, up next, we're gonna do some negative angles, which we already looked at in a previous video. Hopefully you remember the tricks for handling these. So question A, sine of minus pi on four. Uh, as we looked at previously, sine and tan are odd functions. So when you have a minus or a negative angle, that minus sign can just be taken out the front of the function. So sine of minus pi on four will be the same thing as minus sine of pi on four. Pi on four being 45 degrees. So we get minus sine 45, which is negative one over root two. Okay, for question B, we looked at cos being an even function. So when you do cos of a negative angle, it's the same answer as the positive angle. So cos of minus three pi on four is the same thing as cos of three pi on four. Okay, so pi on four is 45. If we multiply that by three, we'll get 135. 
That puts us in quadrant two, so we're doing three quarters. So we're a quarter back from 180. So we're 45 degrees back, which means we're 45 degrees in quadrant two. Okay, quadrant two, sine is positive. So cosine and tangent are negative. So we're gonna do um, negative cos 45 because we are in quadrant two. All right, cos 45 is the same thing as sine 45. It is one over root two and we've got our negative as well. So these two have the same answer. What do you know? Poetry. Okay, some couple more examples. We're gonna find 10 of seven pi over three. All right. Hopefully you're getting the hang of this now. We're going to convert our angle. So pi divided by three will be 60. If we times it by seven, we get one of the funniest numbers on earth, 10 of 420. Okay, now remember uh, from the previous video, when we were looking at angles greater than 360, we said that um, sine, cos, and tan always repeat. So you can just take away 360 and you'll get the same answer. So tan 420 is gonna be the same thing as tan 60 because 420 take away 360. Is 60 so it's just the next lap of the unit circle okay 1060 one of our magic numbers that's going to be root 3 over 1 and we'll just write root 3 okay and for d we've got cos of 29 pi over 6 all right so if we do pi divided by 6 we get 30 if we do 30 times 29 we of course get 870 Okay, cos 870, so that's bigger than 720. So that's in the third lap of the unit circle. So we're gonna to need to take away 360 twice. So 870, take away 360, take away 360 is 150. So cos 870 will be the same thing as cos 150. Okay, 150 puts us in quadrant two, it makes us 30 degrees back from 180. So we're gonna be 30 degrees in quadrant two. Uh, in quadrant two, cosine is negative, so we're gonna do negative cos of 30 degrees. Cos of 30 degrees is uh, root three on two, so we have negative root three on two as our final answer for cos 29 pi on six. Okay, lots of steps, so lots of stuff to get familiar with, but once you get the hang of it, the questions are um, pretty straightforward every single time. Okay, finishing off today's lesson with a challenge question. So we have, first of all, an identity to prove. We wanna prove that one over one plus sine theta plus one over one minus sine theta is equal to two sec squared theta. So this is a pretty challenging proof question, but if you are feeling confident, by all means, pause the video and see if you can make the left-hand side equal to the right-hand side. Once we've proved this, it's gonna make answering part B much simpler. All right, so for part A, we'll start off with our left-hand side. Now, how are we gonna make this look like two sec squared theta? Well, we definitely wanna go from one term to, oh, sorry, from two terms to one term. So a good place to start would be combining the fractions. Now, remember to add or subtract fractions, you need to have the same thing on the denominator. So the tricky step is the first thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna take this fraction and I'm gonna multiply top and bottom by one minus sine theta. Then I'll take the second fraction and I'll multiply top and bottom by one plus sine theta, which looks like this. Okay, so in red is what I've multiplied top and bottom, which means I'm really only multiplying by one, so I haven't changed the fractions, I've just made them look different. Now we have the same thing on the bottom of each fraction, which is what we want, so now we can add them together by summing the numerators. Okay, so important to note that on the bottom, when we're gonna have this as our common denominator, if we expand out these brackets, we have one plus sine theta and one minus sine theta. So because we have the same things, plus and minus, we can use our difference of two squares expansion where we do one squared minus sine squared, okay? So up top, we've got one minus sine theta plus one plus sine theta. And on the bottom, I've just expanded the brackets out to be one minus sine squared. Uh, okay, so up top, we've got a minus sine theta and a sine theta. They're gonna cancel out, which is great news. It's gonna leave us with a two, which is great news because there's a two in our answer. Now the bottom, put on your thinking caps. What's another way of writing one minus sine squared? Is there an identity we can use here to replace one minus sine squared? Yes, there is, because that is another alternative form of cos squared. Okay, remember, sine squared plus cos squared is one which tells us that one minus sine squared will be equal to cos squared. So the top works out to be two and the bottom we can write as cos squared. 
And now remember, sec is 1 over cos. So if we have cos on the bottom of the fraction, if we want to bring it up to the top of the fraction, we can write it as sec. All right, so 1 over cos is sec. So 2 over cos squared will be 2 sec squared theta, which is the right-hand side. And that was what we were asked to prove. So we say as required. Great success. Okay, like I said, a pretty challenging proof question, but now that we have this statement proved, it's gonna make part B much easier to handle. So obviously the question in part B is um, looking like the left-hand side of our proof question. So this tells us that rather than calculating these two fractions, what we can instead do is calculate the right-hand side, which is two sec squared of the angle. And for question B, our angle this time is now gonna be pi on three. So we can say this thing here is the same thing as two sec squared pi on three, so rather than working with these messy fractions, let's just figure out the right-hand side. All right, so to figure out our sec, we need to figure out cos because sec is cos flipped upside down. So cos pi on three is gonna be cos 60, which is equal to one half. Okay, that tells us that sec 60 will be this turned upside down. So instead of one over two, we'll have two over one, which is just two. And now to calculate two sec squared pi on three, we just got to do two times two squared. Okay, if sec 60 is two, sec squared 60 will be two squared. So we have two times two squared. So well done if you already tried it and you got a final answer of eight for question B. Okay, beautiful. You guys can now have a go at uh, exercise 903, which like I said, is just the same stuff we've already been doing, but with the extra step of converting from radians to degrees. So it's a really good practice. Um, let me know if you're struggling, you need more help. And thanks so much for watching. Catch you later.